Hello and welcome to this live stream and today we're going to talk about what is RPA. My name is uh, Stine and I've worked with RPA for the last five to seven years, so uh, not a rookie in RPA, almost a, a veteran one would say. Today we're going to talk about what RPA is, why should you learn RPA and why should you work with it, who can actually learn RPA and who can start to work with it and how do you get started. If you have any questions, please post them in the chat and we will take them at the end uh, because uh, that's going to be, be the best benefit for all of us. So please post them there and that's a great help. Thank you for joining. So what is RPA? I think it's not really uh, good for you guys to, to learn what I think RPA is. So I went out and uh, I found some more general definitions. And if you uh, look at academia... Hmm? Sorry, you guys, we had some technical issues here. And if you look at academia, getting back to what is RPA, um, academia and some of the most uh, notable uh, academian people working with RPA is... Uh, uh, Wilcox and Lassity, and they say that it's tools that automate tasks that have def defined rules, structured data, and produce deterministic outcomes. That's a pretty high level and not very common uh, layman uh, uh, terms, so uh, let's try to look at the more technological uh, definition of it. It's an umbrella term, uh, and it's somehow a tool that kind of uh, automates element identification and not by screen coordinates. And if you look at uh, Microsoft, one of the large suppliers of RPA tools, what they say is that it's a tool that can connect all the new systems and reduce repetitive tasks using UI-based uh, automation. So I think we're quite good covered with these three definitions. What is RPA? And then the really interesting thing is, um, let's look at a robot. Here is a really uh, common or, or a very simple use case. It's, uh, we imagine that we are a car dealer um, and want to get some more detailed information about several cars in our portfolio. He has a list of unique registration numbers of the cars, so the number plate of the car, and he wants to have an overview in Excel. Let's start the robot here. Work, yeah, that doesn't work in this presentation, of course. Um, this would have been a robot uh, working. We're having some technical issues here, I'm really sorry, but this is a robot working uh, in the UI. And uh, he wants to have an overview in Excel. You have to have this uh, demonstration uh, at another uh, live session one day. I'm really sorry for this. He gets to get his uh, all his number plates back in the Excel. And he has a complete overview. And by that, he gets many hours back to his business where he can work on selling cars and making his customers happy instead. And he also gets uh, increased uh, quality. So why should you use RPA? I think you can say that there are three types of value. You have value for your organization, for your customer, and also for your employees. The most common uh, value to look at is the organizational value. That is, you save money, you save time, you improve quality, and you also improve uh, productivity. That's the obvious part. That's return on investment on your investment in working with RPA. The two other value uh, drivers are more overlooked when working with RPA. One of them is that you actually get uh, to give, give a bit better service to your customers. <clears throat> Excuse me. And they are very much more satisfied because you are available uh, day, by, uh, day and night because your robots can work any day and they don't have vacations or take time off. And then your customers are more satisfied and they want to come back and, and, and have a better relationship with you as a, as a company. Then the last part is the employee value. The value of the employees are that they get to have a, a better toolbox. They feel that they are more innovative when working, when they don't have to do all these mundane, repetitive tasks. They get to use the right side of their brain instead of the left, just producing and producing and producing. And ultimately, they want to stay in their job because they are satisfied um, with their tasks and the tools that they have been given by you as an employee. <clears throat> Why should you use RPA and how should you use it? My uh, experience from building several hundreds of robots uh, shows that this is some of the most common use cases. 
Um, the white paths are the human interaction and the gray part is uh, where the robot is working. The first and the second are very much the same, it's just when the robot is working. Either the robot is gathering input and then the human it makes the transaction based on the input gathered by the robot. Or the next one is the opposite, so the human is gathering something, making some decisions and asking the robot to process and finalize the, the, the task. And then there is the most common uh, use case for RPA when you talk to people, and that is automating the easy wins or the highway of cases. So let's aim for 50 or 80% of uh, the, the, the iterations of a, of a given task, and then you have a robot to execute that. The last 10, 20%, you can have a human uh, auto, um, work with. And then we come to a, a more new kind of a robot, which is the assisting a robot. So a digital assistant, you could assume instead of having an assistant sitting next to you, you have a digital assistant. So you do some work, then you maybe you have to go to lunch or you go home by the end of the day and you ask your robot to produce some work while you are not uh, sitting by your desk. And when you come back, either from lunch or in the next day, the robot has done all the, the tedious mundane work and you can keep on working with your task. Um, I personally think that is the future also for RPA, where we see it together with us humans. Then we have the last one, which is the one we all would want to find uh, cases like that. That is that you have a, a number of given uh, tasks and you can create a robot that automates 100% of them. But I'm sorry to uh, burst your illusion, you're not going to find many of them. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm just going to take some water. I've <clears throat> been teaching too much this week, um, so my voice is losing. <coughs> so, who can actually use RPA? Who can get started on working with RPA? When I started back in 2015, <coughs> 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 sorry, the people that could actually work with the RPA tools were only professional developers. So that would be engineers, uh, IT programmers, or people with experience with uh, object-oriented programming. That has changed over the last few years, and now you can both be a professional but also a citizen developer. And I think that uh, we don't have to say that one uh, excludes the other. They can live in coexistence and make sure that we build the best RPA solutions. For If you're joining as a citizen developer, you can definitely use RPA to create personal productivity, and as a non-citizen developer, but a more professional developer, you can use RPA in a more advanced way. So the great way today is that we are more people that can get to use with RPA. Um, personally, I'm not a professional developer, so I'm really happy that the tools are getting to a maturity level where I can also work with RPA and try to build my own robots. In the early days, it was too technical and too difficult for someone like me. How do you get started with RPA? First of all, you need to find an RPA tool. And then the best part about the RPA tools is that there is a ginormous community around each tool. You can go to uh, each community for the tool, or you can go to uh, public pages or we uh, uh, discords or communities in LinkedIn or different other social medias. Um, Microsoft has made it really easy to get started with RPA, making the Power Automate for desktop and, and Power Automate available from uh, Windows 11 for free. And if you are not on 11 yet, you can just go there and download it for free as well. Um, I think that's a, a big benefit for the community of the, of the citizen developers. And then the basic thing you only need to do is you need to find an idea. And my best advice is try to look at your everyday work and find the tasks that you think are annoying. If you have an annoying task that you do each day or maybe twice a week, try to build a robot. And the best uh, advice for me is just start building. Every time you encounter a problem, go uh, to Google or one of the communities and, and post your question. And there are so many eager uh, developers out there ahead of you and your learning curve that will help you. And then really fast, within weeks, you can have a, a, an increased personal productivity and you also have new skills uh, in your backpack and in your career development uh, from today. So my best advice is to, uh, to just get started. And then just on a final for fun note here, uh, on the right side, you see a, a screenshot of a Microsoft Excel version 2.0 from October 1987. Uh, I was uh, six months old uh, back then. But if we imagine today that we're sitting in 1987, try to replace the word RPA in this entire presentation 
with the word Excel, uh, that would be quite kind of fun, right? Yes, uh, I am 100% sure, to be honest, in my personal opinion, that the RPA will be in the future for you and me, like Excel was uh, for, for, for people back in 87. I'm quite sure people thought it was revolutionary um, and it made their personal productivity uh, very, very much better and they, it gave them new skills. Uh, RPA is, is, is on the same path, making uh, it available for so many people in the Windows platform uh, and making all of us able to, uh, to learn new skills and be more productive. That is uh, basically uh, the, the, the words that I wanted to give you today. Now I hope we can have a discussion in the chat. And also you are more than welcome uh, to, um, to go to my LinkedIn and connect and also to our YouTube uh, and do uh, whatever you are, you are uh, and post all your questions and connect. That would be really fun. I don't think we have any questions, do we? No. And thank you for viewing. <laughs>